Welcome to Unit 1, Lesson Topic 9. I'm Mr. Polarski. Our topic today is the Pythagorean Theorem. Our objectives today are, I will be able to solve problems with the Pythagorean Theorem. Second objective, I will be able to identify right triangles. Let's get this math party started. Solving problems with the Pythagorean Theorem. To be able to solve problems with the Pythagorean Theorem, you've got to know the parts of a right triangle. Here we have, in a right triangle, the side opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. In this particular diagram here, the hypotenuse is going to be, and is always in any diagram of a right triangle, the longest side. In this case, this would be the hypotenuse. We typically use, typically use a lowercase c for the hypotenuse. It tells us right here it is the longest side. It, referring back to the hypotenuse, so the hypotenuse is the longest side. Each of the sides forming the right angle is a leg. So right here, this long leg here, and the shorter leg here, well, they're legs because they make the right angle. And normally, typically, they're represented by lowercase a and lowercase b. So let's take a look at the Pythagorean theorem itself. As I said in the other slide, to be able to solve problems with Pythagorean theorem, you need to know about the parts of a right triangle. And to be able to solve problems with the Pythagorean theorem, you need to know that theorem itself. And here it is. In any right triangle, the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. Let me read that one more time. In any right triangle, the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. Well, that's a lot of words understand what a right triangle is in its parts, that A and B are the legs, the parts that make up the right angle are the legs, and the side opposite of that is the hypotenuse, we can simplify that to A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. But you have to remember, C is the hypotenuse. In this theorem, and I've never seen the Pythagorean theorem not use A, B, and C. Sometimes I've seen it as a capital, A, B, and C but typically it's lowercase a, b, and c for the sides of a right triangle where c is the hypotenuse or the longest side or the side across from the 90. So that's the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. The sum of the square of the sides is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. The first problem we're going to solve with the Pythagorean theorem is very simple, very straightforward. But one thing you need to know when you're working with the Pythagorean theorem, either you're finding the side, the length of one of the legs, or you're finding the length of the hypotenuse. And finding the length of the hypotenuse, I think, is the easiest kind of problem you can solve. So let's take a look at this. It tells us what is the length of the hypotenuse of this triangle. So in this case, we need to find C. So using the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. We substitute in. It doesn't matter which one of these is A or B. We could say A and we could say B right there. It doesn't really matter. So we, that would give us 8 squared plus 15 squared being equal to C squared. Now we square those two numbers. It's 64 plus 225 being equal to C squared. We add those two together, that gives us 289. And here's something that might be new to you. I hope it's not, but it might be. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take the square root of each side. The square root of C squared is C. And the square root of 289 is 17. So the length of the hypotenuse here is 17 meters. So in this problem, very simply, we had to find the length of the hypotenuse. We plugged the numbers in and did the math. New thing here might have been taking that square root. That's why I did it in purple for you. In the next example, we're going to see how we're going to find the length of one of the legs. In example 2t, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve a problem. It says a toy fire truck 
is near a toy building on a table such that the base of the ladder is 13 centimeters from the building. The ladder is extended to 28 centimeters to the building. How high above the table is the top of the ladder? Well, our final answer is going to be using this 9 down here. And I don't want to get you overexcited about this 9 at this point. But this 9 is going to come into play later on when we go to find our final answer. What we have to focus in on right now is this B and this idea that we got a right triangle right here. Now, we know it's a right triangle because it's marked as a right triangle. The problem gives us some key numbers. It tells us that the back of the ladder or the base of the ladder is 13 centimeters from the wall and that the ladder is extended 28 centimeters. We want to find how tall this is. We actually want to find this. We want to find what I'm going to highlight in blue. We want to find this right here. Hopefully it straightens out. We want to find what I just highlighted in blue. But to do that, we first have to find this length B, the length of the ladder or the height of the ladder from where the ladder is extended up to the bottom of the truck. And that's going to be a Pythagorean theorem problem. And you can see we already have a B here. So when we go do our A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, we'll just solve for B. We'll call 13 down here. We'll call this A. This is C. Now, the reason this is C, it's the side opposite the 90 degree angle. It's the hypotenuse. It's always the longest side, and it's always the C in the Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to have 13 squared plus B squared is equal to 28 squared. Now, when I solve this problem, 13 squared is 169 plus B squared, and 28 squared is 784. I subtract 169 from both sides. And what that does is it, that gets the B squared isolated for me. When I do 784 take away 169, that gives 615. So B squared is equal to 615. Now, when I take that square root, the square root is 16 rounded to the nearest whole number is going to be 25. Now, 25 squared is 625, but if I take the square root of 16, it's 24 point something, and that point something is going to round to 25. Now, here's where the two-step part comes into the problem. We found that this B is approximately 25 centimeters. What we have to do is we have to take that 25 centimeters, we have to add it to the 9 centimeters from where the ladder is above the table. The ladder was nine inches above the table, the base of the ladder, because it was on the truck. So we add those two measurements together, that gives us approximately 34 centimeters as our final answer. A lot of students, even a lot of uh, math people, might stop here. But you can't stop here. You have to take that one extra step and add. We're moving out and away from solving problems with the Pythagorean theorem, assuming that the triangles are right, to now we're going to be identifying if we have right triangles, or in the second example of this second part of this video, the fourth example actually, of how the forces, or if the forces are forming right angles. And that's going to be an important physics topic. This might pique your interest that maybe you want to study physics someday. So anyway, identifying right triangles, we do that with a property called the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. If a triangle has sides of length a, b, and c, and a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, then the, right, then the triangle is a right triangle with a hypotenuse of length c. What this means is if you're given three sides, lengths of sides of a triangle, you can determine if they form a right triangle. That would be good at construction if you're trying to see if something is square, uh, when you're building something square to another structure or whatever. What is key and critical when you're testing these sides is to remember the hypotenuse is always the longest side. And that's going to be the longest side whether it is or is not end up being a right triangle. But to do this correctly, we have to put in the longest side we're given in for the hypotenuse. When we identify tri right triangles in example 3T, what I want you to understand is that this is a uh, 
should be a very simple process for you, especially these problems, it's pretty straightforward. We're told to determine whether the given lengths are sides of a right triangle. So we're going to be using that converse of the Pythagorean theorem. And using that converse, I like to write down the Pythagorean theorem because what we're doing though, instead of saying that this is equal, what I like to do is I like to write an equal sign with a question mark over that. I'm testing that equality right now with these three numbers. So substituting these in, remembering this has to go in for C. This doesn't matter, A or B. In this case, they're the same, so it really doesn't matter. So we have 5 squared plus 5 squared, and that has to be equal to 7 squared. Well, hopefully you can see at this point it's not going to work out, but if not, uh, 5 squared is 25. The other 5 squared is 25. 7 squared is 49, and hopefully you know that 25 plus 25 is 50, and of course 50 is not equal to 49, which means that these sides, these lengths, are not, or they do not form a right triangle. And we put the word A in there, and that's an abbreviation right, so this is not a right triangle. Now for the second set of numbers, we'll do the same process, but we're going to have a different result. So using the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared, remember, we don't know if that's equal or not, equal to c squared. Substituting the numbers, remember, this will be c because it's the longest side. So we have 10 squared plus 24 squared plus, or I'm not sorry, I'm sorry, I am sorry, um, that should be an equal sign there, equal to 26 squared. Squaring these numbers, 10 squared is 100. 24 squared is 576, and we are testing that equality, and 26 squared is equal to 676. And of course, when I add 100 to 576, that does give 676, and that does equal to 676. Therefore, 10 centimeters, 24 centimeters, and 26 centimeters form a right triangle. So there's very simple problems in determining if three lengths form a right triangle. An example 4T, we're going to be looking at a very basic physics concept. Uh, it has to do with forces, and the reason it fits in here in identifying right triangles is because of what I have typed here in blue. If two forces pull at right angles to each other, the resultant force is represented as the diagonal of a rectangle as shown in the diagram. The diagonal forms a right triangle with two of the perpendicular sides of, a, of the rectangle. So if we can use the forces in here, the three given forces, this being one of the legs of the right triangle, this being the other leg, and this being the hypotenuse, we can determine if these two forces, force A and force B, are pulling at a right angle with each other. So, using the Pythagorean theorem, the force A squared plus force B squared is equal to the force of C squared. Well, we're told here that for a 50 pound force and a 120 pound force, so we could say 50 pounds here and 120 pounds here, the resultant is 130, are the forces pulling at right angles? Well, if they are, the resultant force would be our hypotenuse. So we just got to plug these numbers in. 50 for A, 120 for B, and 130 for C into the Pythagorean theorem. If this equality is true, then they are pulling at right angles. So let's check it out. So A will put in 50, so we're going to end up having 50 squared plus 120 squared. And is that equal to 130 squared? So when we square 50, that gives 2,500. 5 times 5 is 25, and tack on the two zeros. Here, 12 times 12 is 144, and tack on two zeros, that'd be 14,400. And here, 13 squared, remember we're testing that equality, 13 squared is 169, tack on two zeros. And when we add these two together, 2,500 plus 14,400 is indeed 16,000, 
900. So this equality is true. Therefore, force A and B are pulling at right angles, or are pulling at a right angle. So there we can use the Pythagorean theorem to determine if two forces are or are not pulling at right angles with each other when we know the forces.